Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Tenebrae service, that day where we celebrate the death of our Lord. Tonight's service is a reflective service, one different than most, but I invite you to turn your hearts towards the passion of our Lord. Um, as we begin our service, I invite you to uh, join in our record of Please rise. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you bore the sins of all people in your body on the tree of the cross, that through your death, eternal life also might rise anew, and that the ancient servant who overcame us by the tree in the garden might likewise, by the tree of your cross, be forever overcome. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one ever one God. Amen. Please be seated. Savior Jesus the Christ, we got the Holy Spirit. When we view the cross, I think that somehow we need to learn to see our own complicity in it. The radical nature of Jesus' death will not really take root in our lives unless we can come to that point of recognizing that Jesus' death includes me. He died because of me, because of my sin. We cannot dismiss the crucifixion as an act by self-righteous Jews or brutal Romans. We 
have to come to accept the fact that Satan uses people. He uses ordinary, even good-spirited people. He uses religious people to accomplish his means. But as we do so, we distort things. Before long, we begin to call evil good. And we call good evil. Every time we allow sin, we are seduced with its distortions. And we nail Jesus to the cross one more time. I want to share tonight a text from Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Years ago, there was a comedy series called MASH. Remember it, anybody? Uh, it was a favorite many years ago. It was an abbreviated term for Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. The setting was during the Korean conflict. And in one episode, after uh, they find a, a rather cocky young pilot to come into the MASH unit after he had been wounded. He was not wounded seriously, but his plane had been shot down. And he tells everybody in a rather boasting voice that flying as a pilot really gives him a high. And the war would really be a drag if it were the fact were, were for the fact that he would be able to fly. And he said that every time he goes out after a couple of missions, they reward him by going back to Japan for several weeks of R and R. The war to him was really a lark. And then one day, a little Korean child was brought into the MASH unit, and the little arm of the girl had been horribly mangled by an air raid. The young pilot was taken aback. It was not his plane that did the damage on this little girl, but for the first time, he faced his own complicity in the brutality of war. For the first time, he did not see what was going on from a perspective of 10,000 feet, but through the eyes of an injured child. There's a danger in looking at the crucifixion, the crucifixion from 10,000 feet. And we can easily slip into romanticizing the brutality and the ugliness that the cross represents. I love the old hymns that talk about the old rugged cross. Somehow they lull us and make us very comfortable and warm. But the cross reminds us soberly that Jesus went to the cross and he died. And not only did he die, he died for me. Jesus' death had a beginning before this day that we call Good Friday. It had its beginning in the heart of God. It turns out that our God has always had a plan to have a loving relationship with his people. But God's plan and God's desire was interrupted with sin. It began in the garden and it continues today. We live and we suffer with living. We destroy our relationships with God and each other. 
And we know the day's going to come when our days will end and we will die. Well, God's plan led him to where we see him tonight on the cross so that we could learn to live in a relationship with him so that we could know who God is and love him for who he is that we could live as forgiven people so that we can even live forever Jesus came to restore our relationship with God and the only way that he could accomplish that is by dying in our place taking the cross God pays the price that no one else can and today we come to examine the cost of that price on this hill Calvary we are called to see what we do not want to see namely our guilt and we see Jesus dying before us our text tells us that next to Jesus were two criminals one who didn't see any connection between himself and Jesus on the cross he mocked Jesus but the other criminal saw the destruction that he was guilty of he admitted it still and he knew that his death was the right place for him and that he fully deserved that sentence somehow God worked a miracle in this man's life he saw something different in Jesus he didn't deserve it but he spoke up to Jesus and he said remember me when you come into your kingdom he could see the destruction brought on by his own life and the question is can we tonight is our time to turn and to face the one who is on the cross the one who died for us Lord, have mercy upon us. Twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law you ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you had the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat in a place called the Stone Pavement, 
and early the Bible. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered it over to them to be crucified. it from me to boast. Gracious God, we receive your free forgiveness as we acknowledge and confess our sins. Do not let us inherit the punishments our sins deserve, but rather absolve us for Jesus' sin, and grant us grace always to serve you with love that falls out from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written.
Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Amen. Gracious God, you know all the paths of our lives, how we walk among dangers of many kinds. Send your Holy Spirit to go with us, that we may draw strength for every trial from your abiding presence, both now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for the exalted, also his tomb. But the tomb that was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So he said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots, for we to see who it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, He had divided my garments in my hand, and for my clothing they cast lots. In humility, we adore you, Lord Jesus, and we declare your ransoming love. Not with gold or silver, but with your precious blood, where you ransomed us. Gracious God, in your tender love for humanity, you sent your only Son, Jesus, to be our Savior by becoming one of us, by living and serving among us and by pouring out his precious blood on the cross for us, that through faith in his name we might be ransomed from the sentence of death which lay upon us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The fourth word. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. For our sake, the Lord Jesus became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. I Gracious God, even as he hung dying on the cross, Jesus was concerned for the practical well-being of his mother. Grant that we may humbly follow his example of loving and serving the people in need even when it costs us to do so. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. said to fill the scripture and thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So he put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. <coughs> when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus has become the mediator of a new covenant. Gracious God, in Jesus' passion, you transformed an instrument of 
torture and death into the means of life and peace for all people. Transform us as well, that in denying ourselves, taking up our own crosses and following Jesus, all suffering may become for us a path into love and joy, life and hope, forgiveness and grace, to be shared with others. In Jesus Christ our Lord, Since it was the day of preparation, so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. And the Lord has taken up again, and of Gracious God, who in the person of Christ Jesus was wounded on the cross, that you might rescue us from the power of the devil, help us to remember and thank you for Jesus' passion through which we are reconciled with you, receive forgiveness of sins, and are rescued from unending death. Through Jesus Christ our Lord,
mercy upon us. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about seventy-five pounds of it. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now at the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb which no one had yet been in. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. sacraments, with the presence of your Holy Spirit, and with your strength and blessing. Abide with us when the shadows of affliction and temptation overcome us. Abide with us under the shadow of fear and despair when death comes. Abide with us and with all your people through the end of time and throughout all eternity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, sinful men to suffer death on the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 